What's up, everyone? Today we're going to be looking at the top eight lists from the Thailand Championships. Yesterday we looked at Taiwan. These are both our first look at tournaments other than Japan in the Paldea Evolved format. Uh, keep in mind that these tournaments are best of one until they get to a bracket. Uh, Thailand, unlike Taiwan, was a nine best of one Swiss round day one into a top 64 single elimination bracket to determine our champion. And I believe that 32 players, maybe 24, got their invite off of this Um Maybe less. Uh, shout out to Cora on Twitter who put everything together. Uh, she is uh, working with Pokestats, I believe. Uh, check out their Twitter. Check out her Twitter. Uh, they went ahead and compiled uh, the top eight lists that are still not found by other people. Looking through the stream, whatever. You know, hard work does not go without mention. Uh, so shout out to them. Shout out to you guys for watching. And let's jump into the top eight decks. Uh, you can see already that the finals is an Arc Dura Fiesta. So let's talk about why. So going into this set, we've talked about how Guardi is going to be one of the best decks in the format, but Arc Dura does make its way into the finals, and this was the champion list playing a very simple-looking list that uh, Nathan Stratford and his friends did pilot back at Portland. Uh, a genius idea, honestly, with the list. Uh, very similar in nature, uh, playing very similar crowns across the board, including the Halucha and the Radiant Alakazam, playing one copy of Single Strike Energy to uh, power through some things, I'm assuming, like Dragonite is the big one that you want to power through. Uh, a copy of Raihan is replacing a copy of uh, Adventure's Discovery. The previous list did not have Raihan, but Raihan does make its way into here. Volo is still having a place. Um, I don't know why there's one research up here, but there, yeah, the research is in here. Um, there's three Chorus, uh, two Judge, one Karens, um, two Boss's Orders. Uh, list is kind of scattered all over the place, but a very simple... I think stock standard arc Dura Umbreon, which is weird to say because about a month ago this deck wasn't an archetype, and now it has become uh, scattered all over regionals, uh, as we saw in Portland, and now is making a splash on the international stage. In second place, we had arc Dura Picks. Um, this is similar to the list that uh, Alex Shemansky used to win the European International Championships, but has a copy of Galarian Zapdos in the list, uh, as well as a Drapion. Uh, one Japan, not the two, so your main matchup is still a little bit shaky. There's two Paths to the Peak and two Lost City, so not a four, full grip of four Lost City. Four Research and three Colors, so a lot of supporters. Uh, Sharon's Care, as well as a Karen, uh, sorry, Karen, uh, Raihan to kind of pick up your, uh, heal your Pokemon, and then also power up a guy in one turn in case your Arceus gets knocked out. Um, there is one copy of Avery, which I'm not quite sure what matchup the Avery necessarily is amazing in, because I think you kind of want... I don't know, maybe Guardi. Guardi is probably like the biggest one that it impacts. Uh, maybe Lost Zone as well. But I think Avery is like a weird supporter to be included in here. But nonetheless, I digress. Avery is good. Um, I'm also surprised to see neither of these lists playing like one copy of Super Rod. Um, just because I think one copy of Super Rod just makes it so you have better discards in the early game. And like you don't feel as punished if your fish hits the discard early. Um, or like maybe you're like a, a Dura V Max or an Umbreon V Max it's the discard early because Super Rod plus Ultra Ball or Super Rod plus Raihan or Super Rod even plus Adventurers can kind of dig that out for you. So a little bit interesting. Uh, this list has no Adventurers. But those are our top two lists. Top four, we have a uh, colorless Lugia build that's going to become... It's becoming more popular over in uh, foreign countries. Uh, sporting attackers like your Snorlax and Wordier to do a ton of damage. Uh, this list has no other secondary attackers besides those two. A Sylveon to just power up and find those items in the early game because going first, uh, sometimes just being able to put an Aroma or an Ultra Ball into your hand can really just give you that uh, push you need to set up and play the game. So really cool addition. Um, no therapeutic energy in this list, uh, I believe. I don't know what energy that is. regenerative. Yeah, it's two regenerative, two gift, three jet, three V-Guard, and four DTE. No, uh, None of the therapeutic energy that's newer in this set, which pairs very well with Snorlax, actually, uh, which I thought would, you know, make a pretty good impact. Jet Energy plus Wordier is very good for just getting that one big Oko uh, towards the mid or end of the game, uh, as well as your big copies of Lugia. Um, with this list, it feels like with no other really secondary attackers, you might want to play something like another healing card, like a Sharon. So there's no Penny in here at the moment. There's two Serena, two Judge, uh, or two Serena, two Boss, sorry. Um, and a Dunsparce as well, but I feel like there should be at least one healing card, like either a Penny or a, a Sharon's Care or something to just mitigate some damage. Maybe your Lost, Zone maybe your lost Box matchup is fine without it, um, but there's not even an Iono in here, which is a little bit interesting to me. Uh, and then following up with another top four list, we have another Lugia Colorless, uh, also playing no Therapeutic Energy, which is again weird to me. Uh, under my face, you guys can't see it. It's two Gift Energies and one Water. 4-4 uh, Lugia. 
four Archaeops, one Wordier, and two Snorlax. So Snorlax being the optimal attacker, no Radiance Serena even, just opting to forego that completely, which is interesting because there's no path to the peak in this list, so I don't know why you would forego a Radiant completely. Maybe even, like, Greninja would be fine um, to draw cards. Like, I think I think you should put a Radiant back in this. But anyway, there is a Sharon's in this list. There's an Echoing Horn to kind of close out the game with the three copies of Boss. We see four DTE, three V-Guard, two uh, Regenerative and to gift no and one water which is weird uh for luminian i guess but we don't see any copies of jet which i think jets a very oh there's four jets sorry i'm trolling um we don't see any copies of therapeutic like i mentioned uh and therapeutic is like i think a very good energy or therapy energy whatever it's called uh paired with snorlax again weird that that it's not in these lists but uh who might have talked four stadiums is a very heavy stadium count this one also has five stadiums both not playing any copies of pump i guess they don't want to start it but um Severely limits your options to get out of Mew or like path to the peak uh, in the early game. So Lugias did make top four, but eventually falling to the Dark Duras. Um, I mean, they both don't have great ways to get around Dura, obviously. Like this list just completely folds. Uh, and this list just um, has two paths to the peaks, but that's not going to be enough to deal with Dura. So obviously you can see why these two lists did lose to Dura. Um, yeah, in fifth place, we have Lost Box uh, Sables Art. Um, this one playing uh, copies of no... of uh, Everything really, having a, a copy of Zapdos as well to kind of hopefully deal with the um, Architects. Hope is like their their idea, I guess. But like once Arc sets up like their Duras, it's really really hard to pound through those Duras. Um, and like if your Zapdos just gets lost zoned immediately, like you can't really do anything about that if you get lost cityed. Uh, if like Zapdos and Zard both get lost zoned, it's like really tough to win the game. Uh, Mill Tank being good in most metas but dura being in both the finalist lists not really doing much there uh, and both lugia decks can just arc gaps do them so an interesting concept sables art is still sables art i don't think the deck really is any better than it was before i think the serena should just be another clara um but i think the deck is not any better than it was before or any worse it still doesn't generate card advantage uh, and you're still very susceptible to iono's like game uh another lost box they made it in the top eight this one playing uh, more of a turbo build that we've seen before that we're used to with the Dragonite, with the Raikou. One jet energy, um, one shoes. The one shoes is weird, but the one jet energy makes sense. You just kind of uh, can throw up a comfy going to the jet energy and like it gives you a free pivot for the turn. Uh, so it acts as a switching card. Um, and also, but I mean, it's not a switching card that you can burn, right? So I think one or two is fine in these lists, but past that you probably don't want any more. Um, no Kyogre to close out the game. Just relying purely on your Sable, your Raikou, and your Dragonite, which is fine. The one shoes again, weird. Roxanne, fine. Uh, you don't want to play Iona yourself, so the list makes sense. And then we have Arceus, Pika, Tina. Basically taking Arceus, Tina that already existed and just replacing a little bit of the line with uh, the Pikachu, Flying Pikachu, just to have, uh, I guess, more type coverage. Uh, and, and I guess Lost Box, you have a better, like, if you can get the lone Pika, you probably just win the game. Um, so that's the idea behind it. Uh, list is very staple for judge four, three path not four um two v guard a couple of colored energies here just you know flesh it out and then one share to heal as well which i really like i like having healing cards in this format i think that healing cards are good mm -hmm. now notably the only guard of war we saw in top eight was the eighth place or i guess like top eight list um i expected to see a lot more guard of war and it is just a very stock standard list nothing crazy like none of the new fun cards no reversal, nothing. Just straight down the line, Gardevoir cards. Um, not even any Iono in this list, which is really weird. Like, I feel like maybe this isn't Paldea Evolved. And, like, I feel like we're missing a lot of Paldea Evolved cards if it was. So maybe it's just not. Maybe I'm trolling the entire video. Um, well, if you, I mean, you guys can correct me at the end if, if you think I'm wrong. It just feels like, so I guess maybe they just only have Jet Energy. Um, that's, like, new to them. But I don't know, like, why is Carlos Luga being played then? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, there are lists that are already good. So, anyway, very interesting to see. Because this list is very, like, this is basically just Tord's list from uh, the last regionals he played. With the Penny, with the, the Forge Seal Stone, with the Energies, everything. So, uh, the no reversal does make, it, make me believe that maybe these are just in the format that we're playing with Jet Energies as the only addition. So... Uh, maybe I could be wrong, maybe I couldn't, but either way, interesting metagame read. Uh, I think it's pretty solid to say that Arc Dura, uh, Umbreon will be pretty good till the end of the format in its own lifetime. I think that um, Arc Dura will be good until it rotates. 
Uh, Lugio will still be very powerful, and then Lost Box, I think, uh, and Guardia are like one, like right below if you're not playing Kyogre. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you'd like, subscribe, and I'll be out with more content coming out this week. Peace out.